great crowd. It's good to be here. Uh, we've got some time, so I think I'll spend a little bit more time than I usually do in this standard stump pitch, uh, telling you a little bit about who I am, where I come from, and why I want to run for Congress. Uh, <clears throat> I come from a, a middle-class family. I grew up on a fourth-generation fruit and vegetable farm in the town of Livingston in Columbia County on the east side of the river. I grew up there with my three older brothers and mother. Um, my parents did not go to college, but they read to me. They kept uh, PBS on the television very often in the house I grew up in. And the public school teachers that I were exposed to took me under their wing, saw something, and nurtured me so that I did go to college and got my undergraduate degree at, at Princeton. <coughs> and was lucky enough to do my graduate work at Brown University uh, in environmental studies. You know, I know how hard it is for the middle class in this country because I lived it with my family. Um, at the age of 15, my father died, and that was devastating for our family on a farm. And my mother, who for many years was the token Democrat in our town as the secretary on our zoning board, some of you in your towns know what that feels like, um, she somehow kept that family together and that farm together. And it's not until now that I am an adult that I understand how hard it was for her. Um, anything that I have ever been able to achieve in my life is because of the strength of my mother. And um, we still, you know, my mother worked twice as hard as any man ever did, and we still live in a country where we don't have equal pay for equal work. Um, I'm 38. I, I usually like to throw that. This is usually the first couple minutes into my speech where everyone kind of scrunches up their face and wonder, how old is this guy? <laughs> so there it is, I'm 38. I am enjoying what everybody tells me will be the very last week of my life in which I will enjoy good sleep. Um, not because of this campaign, but because on April 11th, I am due to become first time father. Right. And I am nervous as hell about it. Um, not only the late night crying and how am I gonna be able to afford their education, um, am I gonna be able to send my own kid to Princeton, but this is a little bit of the motivation of why I put myself up for this race. You know, I wonder what kind of country will exist for my son should he choose that I'm gonna get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get used to that. Music to my ears. You know, what kind of country is, is it going to be that for my son, for your child as well? Right? I mean, you know, I love this country. And I know you love this country. But there are times when I don't love the way that this country is moving, right? I mean, I'm concerned about a country in which more and more power, more and more influence is consolidated into the hands of a few. I'm worried about a country whose culture values the quarterly earnings report above all other values. I'm worried about a country that's moving in a direction where the water and the soil under our feet in the eyes of some is nothing more than a resource to exploit. Or a country that, God forbid, could elect somebody like Donald Trump that will build a wall around us. Right? I'm running for Congress because I want to serve the community that I grew up in. I want power to return to our hands. And I want to believe that we can create an economy in which our kids and grandkids can stay and raise a family and make a living. That's why I'm running for Congress. Um, you know, when I travel this district, people often introduce me as a farmer, and I'm very proud of that. I work on my farm from July to November, but I'm also some other things. I have been standing up to power in this community all of my career. I've been a journalist for the last 15 years. Since I left Princeton, I've covered issues ranging from how General Electric through every dollar and lawyer they could marshal, has dragged out the cleanup of our Hudson River and the removal of its PCBs for 30 years. It was a problem that could have been solved easily in the 1970s with a few, few hours of dredging. And now the Hudson River, from Glens Falls to the Battery, is the largest toxic Superfund site in the country. I've covered issues on how big pharmaceutical companies game the Food and Drug Administration make our bills go up, market drugs that are analogs to opioids that increase the op opioid addictions that we're seeing in each of the towns 
in this community. I'm very proud that here in this district, I founded a group called the Hudson Valley Smart Energy Coalition that stood up to some of the largest utility companies in the country when they sought to build 153 miles of transmission lines in three of the counties of this district that offer absolutely no benefit 